Strike Industries Bravo. What is it? Is it any good? And what does it cost? We're gonna be going over all that today. But first, each like and comment helps the channel grow a lot. We'd appreciate if you guys did that. Start from top to bottom. We have the Holosun 508T. I like this red dot a lot. One thing that is really cool about the Bravo is that you can run any red dot on your slide. Some of the other options out there, you will not be able to run a red dot. So it is nice that you can use your slide mounted red dot for this. The red dot is sitting on top of an OEM Gunco 320 slide with a aim surplus barrel and a Harrington Arms 320 XL compensator. Moving on down to the Bravo itself, we have the Align Tactical Thumb Rest, which isn't quite necessary for this build. However, I like the thumb rest to fit a lot, so we threw it on here. Next up, we have the Strike Blast Shield. This isn't as important with the 320XL, but it is a nice place to put your thumb and not have to worry about accidentally touching the slide or compensator when you're shooting, as this X-Carry slide combo setup doesn't quite go all the way out to the end of the Blast Shield. Um, so that is something when you're shooting to be careful of. Make sure your thumb is planted on the blast shield and that you do not surpass the muzzle. With the Bravo, they have the base chassis system you can buy and then all of these add-ons. Uh, more coming too. We've seen a couple at SHOT Show that are not available yet. Um, but with this blast shield being an add-on, I definitely recommend it. It's gonna allow you to protect your thumb. It's also gonna make it easy to attach this vertical mag holder, if you will. I recommend this a lot. I think it's one of the better attachments for the Bravo. One thing I notice is they give you an extender for the mag release. This is kind of a must to put on, otherwise it's really hard to get the mag out. And talking about that, it is still pretty tight, a lot tighter than the Flux. So that is something that might wear in. We've got a lot of rounds through this now, and it's still pretty tight, but it's not impossible to get out. It's just something you definitely have to hit that mag release pretty hard. Um, and pull to get it to come out because it is pretty tight. Um, but other than that, no complaints. We shot this a lot without a weapon light. We recently threw one on there. On here is the TLR1, and I actually don't hate it. I thought it was going to be uncomfortable to hold the Bravo. However, it's not bad at all. There's still plenty of mag to hold on to, even though your hand gets pushed down. I just actuate the light with my index finger and it works out pretty good. Moving our way back, we have a couple sling point attachments here, which is pretty nice that they integrated this in here. I will say, I don't know why they made this so long. I feel like they could have shortened this up a little bit. It could have been just to have a better length of pull for the actual stock itself as it is kind of tight and crammed up. Moving our way further back, we do have a Picatinny mount here so you can throw on any brace or stock setup. I will say, I like there's a lot. This dual folding stock is pretty awesome. When you start looking at it from an engineering standpoint, I really like what they did. You can push the left button to get it to go to the right. You pull up and flick it back, and then you can push the right button down to get it to go to the left. Again, pull up to get it to go back. Or, if you wanna quickly detach it, you push both of them, slides right out. I really like this design, I think it's really cool. It's really easy to operate, and it makes it such a small package. They did go with an aluminum stock, which I can appreciate, and then you get two options. This is the actual stock itself, and then you can also do a brace. Again, we have more sling points here on the stock, which is nice. It'd have been kind of nice to see one up front somewhere. I don't know how this would work with a two-point sling. Seems like it's more set up for a single-point sling. I will say the Alpha was pretty cool because it had a like diving board optic mount rather than just using your slide-mounted optic. However, I'm pretty sure I seen something at SHOT Show that looked like a, an entire shroud so that you could mount a larger optic on there, so I'll be Really looking out for that because I like that style. However, if you're going for the minimalist look, I really do like the Bravo. It's pretty slim compared to some of the other SMG chassis out there. Everything feels pretty nice. The quality is pretty good. The injection molding is pretty nice. They used aluminum when they should have. The mag release is pretty positive for the actual mag itself, the primary mag. Now working our way down the Bravo chassis itself. The injection molding is really nice. They do have a phenomenal funnel in the bottom here. It's got a built-in magwell, which is really nice. You don't have to pay money for an additional magwell, very similar to some of the other options out there. It does work with the Harrington Arms 320 mag extensions or the P320 21 round mags. Obviously it still has to be a 17 round mag. You cannot put a 15 round mag in here. We are running the Custom Works FCU and we did have a little weird issue with this. It was really cold one day. Again, this FCU has been in all of our guns, so it's incredibly dirty. And what we were having was when we'd pull the trigger, shoot around, it would reset, but it would stick. It just would not fully reset. I would just tap the bottom, it would shoot forward. So I pulled it apart and I had some lube on the FCU in a couple spots. Put it back in and we had a light primer strike. The lube could have been slowing down the system. And then after that, we haven't really had any issues. However, I pulled the FCU out of the Bravo today after the range to show the guys at the shop. And when I put it back in, we had the exact same issue. So I'm not wondering if there is 
minimal clearance in here for the trigger bar to travel. It seems like it's actually rubbing ever so slightly on the chassis itself. So keep that in mind. You may want to add some lube in here so that there's no friction on the bar itself. It could just be an injection molding tolerance that is a little tight and it may not be an issue at all. It may just be this really dirty FCU, but it's worth a note and we definitely wanted to mention it in the video. We've not seen any issues with our Flux, which uses the exact same 320 chassis system. So keep that in mind. If you guys are having that issue, just try dropping some lube on your chassis down where your trigger bar is. Um, see if it goes away. I have not been able to recreate this issue again. I did wipe all the dirt and debris off that trigger bar and I think there was just enough carbon buildup on there that it was creating enough friction to get it to not want to reset. However, I think I got that fixed. Besides that, we really haven't had any issues with this, which makes a lot of sense. This is essentially just a 320 frame with a stock adapter um, and some bolt-on parts that you can do, which I actually admire its simplicity. When you look at the Flux Raider, this is an entirely engineered piece. It's very similar to a chassis, but it is very much its own handgun in every other right. When shooting the Bravo, it felt really great. There was very minimal recoil. Of course, the 320XL compensator helped a lot with that. We did do a lot of shooting with the brace, and for this being a very thin line, it didn't hurt at all. Of course, it's nine mil, so it doesn't have a lot of recoil. And I did try pulling the stock off and shooting it one-handed. It did work. Um, it does look a little goofy, but if you did not want to pay $220 for the folding stock and you just wanted to shoot it one-handed or two-handed, um, you could do that. However, I definitely recommend getting this. It is a very cool add-on. And for $220, I think it's definitely worth it. Talking about price, there's a lot of aspects to this. However, the base Bravo, without the shroud, without the extra mag carrier, without the stock, you're looking at $130, which is very affordable. $220 for the stock, $40 for the blast shield, and $40 for the extra mag carrier. So that brings a total of $430. I think it's actually really fair for what you get. It's actually gonna be about $110 cheaper than the Flux. So for a budget P320 SMG build, I think it's definitely worth it. I like it a lot. All the surfaces are pretty smooth. There's not a lot of stippling grip texture on the chassis itself. When you're shooting it like a rifle, you're not really having to hang on for dear life. You're putting all that pressure into your shoulder. And of course it's a nine mil, so it didn't have a lot of recoil anyway. After about four or 500 rounds through this, some things I'm gonna add is the ripstick from Tactical Development. I think that's gonna help a lot rather than reaching up and trying to rack it with the optic. It's kind of hard to pinch it with this blast shield on here. So I will be adding the ripstick. I'm looking forward to the shroud that I seen at SHOT Show from Strike Industries. And I'm going to be adding a single point sling to this. I think since this carries the same ammo as my carry gun, it'll be a perfect little truck gun, perfect little bag gun. And if I'm going to be carrying a regular handgun and this, a sling is gonna be very helpful. I think that's gonna come in handy long-term if I ever have to use this thing in real life. And that's probably it at the moment. One thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna add a suppressor, you might wanna take off the blast shield. You're not gonna have a lot of room in here for a can. It's pretty narrow. So that kind of stinks you lose the blast shield if you wanna run a suppressor. I would like to see a couple different lengths of this. Maybe one that's flush with the X carry slide. Uh, that way it's just more versatile for people that actually wanna run a can. Um, or maybe it's dished out and has room for a suppressor. That way you can still run a weapon mounted light on here. But that's kind of what's cool about this is you don't have to replace the entire chassis. All you have to do is unbolt this $40 attachment and bolt on a different one. Or you could even get creative and 3D print your own. With 100% infill, I think you could 3D print this and it would probably stand up if you're running a compensator that blasts most of that out the front. So the ability to build this out is kind of cool. There's a lot of things you can change on it. So who is this for and should you buy it? I think this is the perfect setup for somebody who wants to build a truck gun based on a nine millimeter platform. And anybody that wants to get into an SMG, this is a really cool setup. If you're a big MP7 fan and you've been looking for a compact build, I think this is it. The 320 is a really cool setup for this with the FCU system. If you have a 320 lying around, you don't know what to do with it. You could build this out for a couple hundred bucks. And now you have a really cool, unique setup that isn't just another boring black P320. So I like it a lot. It's very versatile too. For the money of $430, I think it's a pretty cool buy. And I would definitely buy it again. It's different enough from my Flux that I'm very happy to add it to the collection. And I think it has its unique use cases with how thin it is and the ability to change out the stock setup. And if you're somebody that doesn't like the telescoping flux stock, you can always switch to this folding, which a lot of people really like. A lot of people have liked folding stocks for a very long time. And the biggest thing with this, the biggest pro of the Strike Industries is you can use your slide mounted optic. This is really important for me because removing it for my flux was kind of annoying. Um, so it's really nice that you can do that with the Bravo. If you guys enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.